In this super-sized Lebanon food tour, Oh my lord. You're gonna get a taste of the Middle East like you've never experienced before. I have to say, this is one of the more unique buffets I've ever been to because I don't recognize almost anything, and that's kind of fun. But first, let's back up. <laughs> Lebanese food is beloved around the world. Amazing when you consider the country's population is less than 6 million. Lebanese food isn't just a meal, it's an experience. A journey that beckons you to savor every bite and appreciate the centuries of culinary tradition that have shaped it. On this food tour, we're starting in the streets. Up and down narrow alleyways where we'll discover amazing flavors at affordable prices. It's fried, it's covered in syrup. It's the worst thing you can possibly eat if you're trying to lose weight. From high-end hotels. Check it out. This is breakfast, everybody. To Middle Eastern McDonald's. This video has it all. They have Starbucks, they have Pizza Hut, all the Western classics. You can come to the Middle East and feel like you never left Minnesota. And it all starts with a street side breakfast. Today we're going to be starting with a pretty common breakfast in the area. I'm talking about Ful. The thing with ful is it has a base of fava beans. If you have bad guttural reactions to beans, you may not like this. I've only tried ful one time in my life, and that's when I was in the beautiful country of Egypt. In Egypt, when you eat it, you have to have a police officer watching you the whole time. Here in Lebanon, I'm not sure. Let's see how it's different. Marhaba. And that's apparently how you say hello, not organ. Hello. All right, the fool is about to begin. Right here we have some salt, a clove of garlic, and then some herbs. That's gonna get crushed. Now some lemon, that gets mixed in. Lots of powerful flavors already. And then right here, he's got a big pot of beans here. That goes in the bowl. Wow, this is completely different from what I had in Egypt. He's muddling and mixing the fava bean paste with all these fresh flavors. Now some chickpeas going inside. Give that a little bit of a mash too. Finally, that will go into our serving bowl. It looks delightful. Oh, more chickpeas on top, some fresh herbs, and then a hit of spices. So that's our first dish. I'm gonna actually get one more food here. They have a few different things on the menu, and I am here to try as much food as I can. The second dish, we're having, what's the second dish? Fatik. Perfect Arab pronunciation. Boom. So right here, we found a little beautiful street side eatery to sit down and eat this food. We have our pool right here, $2. So here we have our fitte, fitte. Arabic's tough kids, three and a half dollars. Pretty reasonable prices, because that's a lot of food. If I ate all this, I would literally have so much gas I could go to Mars. And then they bring you this beautiful, colorful vegetable platter. This looks awesome. Now, I was told, use the bread to scoop up the food. How? It's a soup. Let's see how this goes. I could be wrong though. All right, okay. It's chunky enough that you can get a good handful. Let's try it out. Very good. Very different from what I had in Egypt, because here, they're putting in so many fresh flavors. So it's very aromatic and flavorful. Oh. Do I feel like it needs to be on the bread? Not exactly. The best part is you can mix and match flavors. Throw back some herbs, slice of tomato, a little bit of radish, and then chili sauce. Beyond that, I'm gonna add some onion, which makes it so unbearable to be around, breath-wise. <laughs> that's spicy. It's like Middle Eastern sriracha, and the hot sauce has kind of a sourness to it, too. That's one half of our breakfast right here, the fette. Here's all I'm saying. When it comes to me in Arabic, if there's a peace negotiation going down between countries, I should not be the one to translate. I'll be like, it seems like he's talking about peace, but then for sure your mom was involved somehow. Instant nukes. So, our second... Our second dish, some of the same base ingredients, but they've done some new stuff with it too. We're starting with chickpeas. It is still gonna get very beany in here today. Hit it with some spices, and then we're gonna put yogurt on top of that. Ooh. Yeah, screw your overnight oats. Take a look at this yogurt on top of chickpeas, and then a load of these fried chips on top of that. Oh, and then here we have some fried nuts, and all that is cooked up in ghee, it looks like. Hit it with some more spice, and some of that spice, and it's finished. Thank you, sir. Shukra. This one, it's so filled with yogurt. It's like a yogurt parfait, but instead of blueberry, Berries and strawberries. Um, we have beans and nuts. It's not like a parfait at all. Cheers. Mm, these nuts are a game changer. Oh, good flavor, rich, creamy yogurt. Mm, I'm enjoying this. Hit it with a little bit of salt. What I was calling crackers earlier, it's this bread that's been fried. Oh yeah, my last bite. Savory, delicious, Lebanese spices, lots of cumin, lots of flavor, lots of personality. This is course one. So far we spent five and a half dollars. We have a lot more to spend. Let's keep moving. Our next location, it's right here. This place is serving, oh my God, look at this guy. 
All right. Free bikes. This building right here, hundreds of years old, inside a bakery that's about 30 years old, where they're making a food called manouche. Right now, we're gonna go inside and see how it's made. Salam. Right here, we have three pieces of dough ready to receive some extra ingredients. Let's do it. Ah, first you give each piece of dough a little bit of a flip, and then right here, and some vegetable oil, and then he gives it a little bit of texture with his fingies. Look at that texture, very unique. And he's just really getting his fingers right in there. Next, cheese. This is kind of like a Lebanese pizza if you think about it, and I love that this is a breakfast food. Then some sesame seeds going on top. All of this must be transferred to the cooking spatula, and that is sent inside the oven. It's basically like a giant pizza oven inside, and you can see the cheese is beginning to melt. This looks tremendous. Just a wall of fire on the one side. I'm telling you, I'm gonna get one of these ovens in my house, I swear to G-O-D. My wife has a closet, and I think it would work perfectly right in there. Who does want a closet that smells like melted cheese? He says the moment has come, he's gonna take it out. Big reveal, take a look at that. That is looking very tasty. It is still bubbling. You can see the oil, the cheese, it's glistening. It's kind of like a tomato-less pizza. And this is breakfast. Boom, our second course right here. I got three of them, so it would look more cool when he cooked it up. These cost an astounding dollar and a half each. That is remarkable. This is what I really love about Lebanon, is the cheese. People here love cheese. Let's see if we can get any kind of a cheese pull here. Not really, but it did tear apart nicely. So you could eat it plain like this, or you could eat it with vegetables. Let's Try it plain first. That's so good. This cheese is freshly melted. It's oily. Boom, vegetables came. Thanks, kiddo. So this is how people also eat it. I've got my pizza here. Tomato, basil. We're gonna give that a fold. Mm, that's also fantastic. The stuff isn't hurting. It's nice, it's different, it's fresh. The tomatoes are bites. As far as I'm concerned, not completely necessary. We are two meals in and we spent roughly around $11 so far. Not a lot, very affordable food so far and quite delicious. I'm amazed at what you can find right here in the streets for not that much money. Let's keep moving. Right now, we are on the way to our next location and walking through these market streets, and it's incredible. This is a spice shop right here with dozens and dozens of spices to choose from. I wanna show you two that look interesting in particular. First of all, take a look at this. The yellow color might give it away, but you don't usually see it in this form. It looks like a little caterpillar. This is actually turmeric. It doesn't really have any scent to it. Oh no, it does. It smells like turmeric. There's so many spices out there that you only ever get to see it in a spice rack. It's already ground down or crushed or turned into a powder, but here, this is the OG. This right here is cinnamon. This this is huge. I don't know if you're supposed to put your nose all the way inside if you're not buying it, but. It's not good, but it's like puts me at ease. I feel comforted. Like a warm blanket wrapping around me. My gosh, this place is a wonderland of spices. Let's keep moving. We've come to our next destination. This place is busy and loud. Eat the end of Ramadan is coming up in a couple of days. And so there's a lot of celebrations and a lot of foods that are meant to go with eat. In here, they've got a big confectionery and they're cooking all different types of sweets. Oh, those are, take a look at this. These are different sweets and desserts that are meant for the Eid celebration. Oh, look, this is a gigantic tray of baklava. What is the name? This is the name Bodama. Can I have one right now? Okay. Oh, wow. The outside is like a sticky syrup. And then inside, he said it's filled with a cashew paste. Oh. It looks tasty. Inshallah. Mm. It has a delicious sweet crust on the outside, but then the inside is filled with a cashew paste, and that is so delicious. Oh, we're putting more on there. Pistachio. Oh, pistachio. Fresh midvanos. Oh, pistachio. And then some baklava too. Why not? Thank you. Oh my gosh. The hospitality here is ridiculous and also insane. I don't want to eat all their food while being in the kitchen. I think they're very busy, so I do want to try the baklava. You can see beautiful layered pieces of deliciousness. There's nuts inside. It's fried. It's covered in syrup. It's the worst thing you could possibly eat if you're trying to lose weight. Oh, man. Wow, that phrase guilty pleasure, it exists because of this. It's so extreme, it's so sweet, it's so indulgent. It's oily, it's got crunch from being fried in oil. It's super delicious, I love it. I'm not gonna try every single thing here. I'm gonna put some of these in a bag and take them away. So I think we have to pay for this, I think. So it turns out in the end, they charge me um, $10 for that small plate, which is, I don't know, maybe five times the actual price. So there is good overall hospitality. I think these guys were just charging me a talent fee before the camera. But you know what? That's what you get when you don't ask the price ahead of time. Luckily, I've budgeted for this. Let's keep going. Boom. 
nice food right here pastry cart a few different pastries exist here this has coconut inside this one has dates inside and then this one is just bread but let me show you this looks like a purse isn't that fun if i ever got invited to anything even vidcon which i still haven't been invited to i would take this as an accessory you put it around your belt you put stuff inside for sure an iphone is going to fit inside of here right here you're going to see what this man does next my man hello he's going to put a hole in it with his thumb and then he puts in some thyme powder he bangs it around he fills up the whole interior and then that is complete Shukrat. There it is. It's a bread purse full of thyme. The thyme powder, there it is. It's collected in some areas. And let me tell you. Now, I know in the background, it sounds like somebody's screaming because uh, someone kidnapped his kid or his wife or his whole extended family. But no, he's just trying to sell candy. Back to the bread. Lebanese people love thyme. So they put it on everything. Let's go for it. Mm, not bad. I'm assuming you mix this with other ingredients. You can put, maybe you put hot dogs in your purse, ground meat, sloppy joe mix. But it tastes like salt, it tastes like thyme, it tastes like doughy, delicious bread. And all for the low, low price of half a dollar. I like it. We come to our next location. This is a falafel shop. What I like about it is they have a big window over here. You can open it up and you can actually see the guy frying the falafel. Let's go take a look. There's my man. He's got a huge portion of falafel batter right here. He's portioning it and then he's dumping it into this hot oil. Once it's all portioned, it's gonna fry in here for about 20 minutes. That looks healthy. This is being stirred about and some of it is ready to be evacuated. Head to the chopper. No, okay, no, don't, don't go back in. Boom, now you can see the making process begin right here. It starts with the falafel going in. It gets lined up just like so, and it gets smashed by hand. This man is very angry at the falafel. Oh, and then greens on top after that. A load of pickles, purple beetroot pickles, and then a load of tomatoes. Wow, just a waterfall of tahina going on top. And then if you want it spicy, you can get it spicy. There it is, that looks impossible to roll up, but somehow he does it. Look at this focus, the determination. He cuts it in half, and then that is ready to eat. Oh, sir, thank you so much. That looks incredible. Guys, right here we have a huge roll this whole thing is a little bit under three dollars let's just call it three dollars and take a look inside this is the cross section rolled nice and tight with that thin bread and then you can see the falafel do i know the purpose of falafel i don't because i don't really love it that much in my head i feel like if you're a vegetarian and you're just trying to like add some body to your sandwich that would be the reason for it regardless it does look appetizing let's go for it I gotta say, tasty overall. The thing with falafel is it can be dry. And so if you mainly just have falafel, it's gonna be just like sucking all the moisture from your mouth and body. Like when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and he was like, if you look at this, you're gonna turn to salt. And people are like, is that for real? And then they turn to salt. And not even like a nice pink Himalayan salt, like just table salt without iodine. Is that a real story? Yeah. Like I love when my Vietnamese wife learns Bible stories and she's like, do people believe that? I'm like, yeah. yep. So what's saving it from the dryness of those falafels is all those vegetables and all that plant matter he put inside. It's pretty respectable. It's got tahina. It's like this white creamy sauce made from sesame seeds and that blends in well with the other ingredients. I got you. For vegetarian food, not bad. That's a lot of food for not that much money. I must keep going. I must try to do my best to spend $100 on street food here in Lebanon. Let's keep this food train a rolling. Another location behind me. This is a sandwich shop serving something very special because here it's all about the unique ingredients that they're putting inside the sandwich. Yes, you can get your typical falafel or other meats, but you can also get lamb tongue and lamb brain. That's right, a brain sandwich. Let's see how they make this brain sandwich and let's see if it's delicious. We have entered inside. You can see the menu up here. There are uh, uh, um, like 30 options right here. I'm about to order the brains. You can see it in this dish. Just like eight odd brains hanging out. Okay, here we go. He takes a brain. He puts it in a long bread hoagie. He breaks up the brain. Oh, that's a lot of brain for one sandwich. And that right there, in fact, is going to get pressed like a panini. And then he waits patiently. Ominous looking suspicious, waiting for his moment. The time has come to touch it and, and to close it again. The time has come. He takes it out. He puts it up here into a microwave. Are we gonna melt these brains? Take it out of the microwave, bring it down here. He hits it with some seasoning powder. After that, garlic paste. Here, we've got some pickles, some tomatoes, and some salt. Wrap it up and that brain hoagie is ready to go. Thank you, sir. I can't wait. Check it out, we have our sandwich right here. It's looking pretty creamy, it's toasty on the outside. Brain would not be my first choice, but it looks very unique. I just love trying new things. I gotta say, the man who handed this to me is the owner and he gave it to me for free. I didn't ask, so look, everything in Lebanon, it balances out the hospitality, it's real. Sometimes the dessert guy charges you $10, but then this guy gives you a sandwich for free. What a guy, cheers. Oh man, I feel conflicted. It's pretty good. Pickles, necessary. Tomato, necessary. The white garlic sauce that makes everything here taste so good. And then at the very end, you taste a little bit of that like livery flavor that the brain can have. 
A lot of brains in there. It's probably one of my favorite brain dishes ever in my life. Brain sandwich here in Lebanon, a must try. We have come to our next destination and perhaps our last destination is I'm getting quite full from all this heavy food. Behind me, a seafood restaurant. Nearby here, there is a seafood market. These guys buy their fish from them and they have their own little kind of mini market inside. We're gonna go inside, take a look at the non-alive fresh fish that they have and get a couple different things and see how they prepare it. Seafood, Lebanese style, let's go in. Ah, see, it's kind of like a menu. Fried and grilled fish, fried homos. It is a very liberal country, so they have homos. I'm gonna get it probably a cold oos and maybe some homos. Let's go inside. All along here is the mostly fresh, recently deceased fish. They have a wide selection of different species. This one is pink, for example. Here we have these little sardine type fish, but this one over here, that is a lionfish. And what's amazing is that it still has its poisonous lungs on its body, which is wild. Because if that sticks you, you have to go to the hospital. Let's move on down to here. These are the big dog. So I do believe I have to get one of these. It's about the size of my hand. Let's go. Big fish in the fryer. My man, he's got the fish right here. Okay, it's going in the fryer. There we go. Safe distance away. That is what the zoom is for. Wow, just like that, it's done. It only takes a couple seconds. No, mine is there. These have already been fried. <laughs> My man here who says hi have to be in a cooktown. All right, okay. Mmm, aha. Uh -huh. I'm gonna absolutely burn myself here. Good? I'm not really sure what to do. I think the fish has to stay in there about 10 more minutes. You're doing great? Shukran. Here's our second course today. These are shrimp. Those are gonna get fried up too. Oh, yes. I see a little bit of salt, but I don't see any other flavors. We'll see what happens. Boom, shrimp on the plate. We got oil, we got salt. I think that's about it. A very classic recipe. Oh, I think he's taking this fish out. Is it done? Okay, I got a thumbs up. That is mine right there. But that's not it. He's just throwing some bread into the oil as well. What is happening? Mmm, nothing better than fishy bread. Fish on the plate. Bread, cover the fish, give it some privacy. Oh, we got some greens going on top. This sauce up there. Cocktail sauce in the middle. I am not gonna stick around to figure out where that glove has been. I am going to my table. And our food has arrived. Take a look. That is fatouche, a salad with a bunch of fried chips on top, a fish, a hummus, some salt, some tahina, fruit, shrimps, this is much more than I expected. In addition to all this food, I've also ordered a shisha, and this is a perfect appetizer. Shukran. I'm ready to eat, guys. Let's chow down. First dish right here, we have our shrimp. I've got the cocktail sauce. And the shrimp, they didn't do a bunch of Lebanese stuff to the shrimp. They used oil, they used salt. Cheers. That is fine. The cocktail sauce is nice. It tastes like ketchup and mayonnaise mixed together. Not a bad combination. The shrimps are tasty, but the shrimps are just shrimp. Here's how you elevate it. You go like this. Now that's tasty. Now I got some notes of lemon and mint with the cocktail sauce with the shrimp all together. Very tasty. Am I demonetized yet? I hope not. Right here, we have something called fatouche. This is a very common salad. The salad actually does have vegetables, but just underneath all the fried stuff. Try the salad. Tastes like olive oil and vinegar, a bunch of different vegetables, very nice. This giant cracker, this is my first time seeing this in Lebanon. You can use it as a chip, you can use it as a kind of protective device, keep the flies away from your fish. Whatever you want. Here, we have our delicious fish. You can see it's scored right here. I'm gonna take some bread. I'm gonna try to grab a big old piece, hit it with some lemon. Then I'm gonna hit that inside this beautiful bowl of hummus. Look at these decorations. The olive oil sitting on top of the hummus. This is Lebanon in one bite, cheers. What a delightful combination. The lemon makes it so zesty and flaky fish. The fish has some crunch on the outside, but then you bring in the hummus and you've got those garlic notes and you've got the olive oil and you've got so much flavor. When I think of eating in Lebanon, this right here is what I think. In the end, the price of all of this right here, including the shisha and a bottle of water is $28. That's what I gotta say, pretty reasonable. If you thought Lebanese street food was affordable, wait until you see Beirut's most expensive buffet. A culinary experience with piles of protein That's a big old meaty piece And endless food options There's all different types of vegetables Roasted and fried And then I look at something like this and I go Yeah, I don't know It looks yummy Coming in at only $50 we just come downstairs to where the restaurant is. This place is beautiful and this hotel is unique because it's way up on a hill and you can look down at all the city of Beirut. This buffet is opening in five minutes. It's about to get very, very busy in here. There's all different types of vegetables, roasted and fried. And then I look at something like this and I go, 
Yeah, I don't know. It looks yummy. I just don't know what it's called. Here we have a mini salad bar. I'll be staying away from this section. This is a very famous salad that you'll find in Lebanon basically at almost every meal. This is a dish. It might be made with raw meat. This looks like a mashed potatoes shaped into a beautiful cylinder with a pattern on top. Here we have beautiful stuffed grape leaves. There's fish. There's fried cauliflower. There's beets. And then there's hummus here. I believe these are artichoke hearts right here. This is a section we're going to be going to later. This is Middle Eastern desserts like kenefe. You know what that is? Maybe I made it up. You don't even know for sure. They have fruit. In the USA, it means you're eating healthy. Here, it means uh, a treat for after dinner. This is what I'm talking about. This is gorgeous. It's got cream inside and other stuff. I don't know what anything is. I can make up a name for this. You won't know the difference. Yeah, it's a bleep bloop. Super good bleep bloop here. I can't wait to try this bleep bloop. Outside is where they have the main courses. There's a private party over here, and you can see this incredible view looking down onto the city. Boring. Who cares? Food. Right here. The grill is heating up, and it's ready for some meat grilling. This is the mains right here. The chefs are still filling it up. What is this one? This is bourguignon. Bourguignon. See? This is an amazing Lebanese sausage. It smells of strong cinnamon smell. And you have some sausages here. Very nice. So that's all the food. We need to start from the beginning, probably some of those dishes on the table inside. Then I'm going to graduate out to here. I want to see the guys cooking meat in front of me. I need drinks. Oh, God. There's so much going on. I'm going to sit down and make a plan. Let's do this. This is a dish that is made with raw meat mixed with a load of spices. So I want to try some of that. Ooh, classic. Stuffed grape leaves. Depending on what they're stuffed with, they can be quite delicious. This is so perfect. I don't want to destroy it, but also I kind of do. So I'm going to. I need to know what this is. So I believe it's a mashed potato. This is certainly something I've never tried on the show before. It's a freaking artichoke. They have freshly oven baked fish and they smell very fishy, but I'm still going to get one anyways. Let's go eat. We have our first course right here. I have to say this is one of the more unique buffets I've ever been to because I don't recognize almost anything and that's kind of fun. Let's start with potentially the most boring. This right here, I think it's probably mashed potatoes with some herbs and butter inside. Mm, not buttery. It may have some olive oil and it tastes a bit sour. Here in Lebanon, people are big fans of sour flavors. I've never had mashed potatoes quite like that, but not bad. Right here we have the grape leaves. All these are very cold and they're stuffed, but what are they stuffed with? I'm not sure. Let's find out. Salty, it's slightly sour. I think I taste a little bit of pomegranate. Let's break it open and see what's inside. Yeah, it's rice and a load of spices. There's some tomato too, so it's a little bit acidic as well. Here, this has to be raw meat. Come take a look. I know because it makes a really specific gushy sound when I move it around, very much as raw meat would. We've already filmed for our main channel here in Lebanon, and then I had something similar to this too. Let's try it out. Mm -hmm. And not just any meat, that is raw lamb. It's very lamby. There's a load of spices inside. It's a bit intense, actually. It tastes like the spices you would have in a kebab, but it's all raw. Then we have a little fish. If I had to guess, I would say this fish came from the Mediterranean Sea. This smelled fishy, and it didn't look like it was going to be fantastic. <laughs> You cannot judge a food by its smell, just like you cannot judge a person by their smell. Every girl in my 20s, I figured it out eventually. It's called deodorant. Nobody told me. Artichoke. I've not eaten an artichoke for the last 10 years. I think I forgot how. Each of these leaves that you can pull off, there's like a little bit of starch or something on there you can peel off with your teeth. And that has no flavor. The texture is kind of like the inside of a pea. I do like it overall, so it's not a very strong flavor, and they didn't boil this in salt or anything like that. That is the lesser known part of the artichoke. The part everyone knows, of course, though, is the artichoke heart. Oh my God, what am I doing? Am I doing it wrong? Is this food? It seems edible. I don't know, let's see if I spit this out. That part's not that good. Let me break this open. Hold on. Oh, when you break it open, then it reveals, it looks like a cattail. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm not gonna eat this. That was a terrific ending to our first course. Let's go to round two and maybe even get some wine. This one now, at first when I saw this, I thought it was a quiche, but no, it's salmon baked in with perhaps egg or cheese. Oh yeah, that looks like a nice loaf. Nothing better than basically a cake with chunks of salmon inside. I think this is maybe an artichoke heart, and I failed so badly with the artichoke heart already that I want a round two. We have a little bit of hummus. I'm gonna get some of these. They look like egg rolls. Right here we have some beets. Why am I getting beets? Because I want to go to the bathroom later and be terrified for a brief moment. It also adds some nice color to the plate. We've got fish on top. Let's get that on there. And this is looking like a very successful round two. I found the bread section, and actually, this bread has Wi-Fi. Hmm, cool. Let's go eat. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I have course two right here, but I've also ordered a bottle of wine. This is a Lebanese white wine. The camera person gets wine too. Dangerous, because these shots might be out of focus soon. Lebanon is famous for its wine, and people here drink like crazy. They're known for their nightlife. They love to party. Okay, let's get into this right here. I'm gonna start with some beets. I don't know why I love beets so much. They're naturally sweet and they taste like dirt, but I like it. People here in Lebanon, they freaking love bread. I see it at every meal that I've experienced here has bread. We have hummus too. Hummus is made out of a few different things, garlic, olive oil, lots of chickpeas. It's a great hummus. Very smoky, savory, toasted, tasting, garlicky, and delicious. Here, I don't know what this is. It looks like a spring roll. I'm gonna break it open. Oh, it's better than a spring roll. I think these are full of cheese. Mm -hmm. Lebanese cheese sticks. Oh my God, it's so good. It's like gushy, oily white cheese inside. The outside is super crunchy. This is a nice surprise. How often do you break something open and then you discover, oh my God, there's cheese in here. Like if you fall off your bike or something and crack your head open, you're never like, whoa, there's cheese in my head. Is that a bad example? Here we have some quiche and then kind of an orange salad underneath. Not every single food is Lebanese. They do have some food from other neighboring countries as well. Let's try it out. Mm, it's like a spicy, tangy sauce and the fish is fish, but it's a nice combination. That's really good. Here's our quiche, but I don't even know if it's really quiche. I see salmon chunks. I see cheese on top. Cheers. Salmon is so weird. When you first bite into it, it's nice, but it has a little bit of like salmon funk to it. It's a strong fishy flavor. But overall, this is very good. It has like a little crackery, bready base on the bottom. I believe it's eggy in the middle. There's some cheese and then smoky, fishy salmon on the inside. We're about to go get some meat, but first, this is an artichoke heart. This is what I should have been able to get out of that artichoke, but I was too unskilled and too inexperienced. I didn't know what I was doing. That isn't good. It's a weird texture. It tastes very fibrous. It's crunchy. It's nice that it makes a little dish. I could put it in the bathroom. It could hold soap. Let's go get some meat. We're all warmed up. We've had two courses. It's time to get some meat. Hi there. What do you have here? We have fresh mochi with sauce and the chicken and lamb and the rice. Okay, let's try it. All right, so he takes the sauce right here. He puts it in a pot. That is step one. This sauce has a very strong smell of cinnamon. So he puts in a lot of greens. This is a lot of food. Maybe more than I bargained for. So he throws some rice on the plate, some chicken, then some lamb meat. That goes here. Once that's done cooking, that is going to go on top of here. So here we have vinegar and onion together, some chips, and some lemon sauce too. Thank you. All right, we're going to walk this to the table because it is too hot and too heavy. I'll be back for you. I'm going to get more. What else we got here? Now everything is open. It looks tasty. We've got rice. We've got kebab on the beer. Yes. Here we have rice with fish. Okay, I'll try some of that. Very nice. Amazing service. The chef at the beginning of the day said this is a very famous, very delicious sausage. So why not have one, sir? Thank you. I'm welcome. This is enough for course three. Let's go. This is something that you were not gonna find at your old country buffet. And even this dish right here, he literally had to assemble it for me with several different ingredients. We've got lots of vinegar, onions on top. We have these thick greens that almost look like seaweed or sauteed spinach or something like that. There's rice on the bottom that soaked up all the juices that he was boiling up. Let's try this. Sour from the vinegar and from the onions, but I like it. A lot of cinnamon flavor and tasty overall. Oh, take a look at that. That's like a nice big old thick piece of beef. Yeah. I meant lamb the whole time. I don't know what. That's a big old meaty piece. It has been braised so long. It's very soft and tender. It's very delicious. Or as my Cuban friend Ora would say, you're so jummy. Okay, what's going on here? Sausage. Come take a look at this. Here's what I like about this sausage is it's like the inconsistent texture and shape of it. You can see that stuffed with rice. It's looking really intestinal. Let's try it out. Mm. Fatty casing, full of rice, tons of cinnamon flavor, salty. It's interesting because it is a sausage, but it's not filled with meat. They stuffed it with air and also rice. This is a stuffed zucchini. What are you stuffed with? Ah, oh, it's not cheese. That does look nice though. It looks like there's some rice and some meat. Is zucchini technically a fruit? Hey Siri, is zucchini technically a fruit? Zucchini is technically a fruit, although it's treated as a vegetable. Sorry. Hey, you know what? Did I treat you like a vegetable? I'm sorry, because I know you're a fruit. Mmm, very fruity. Last, right here, fish on top of rice. Oh, look at that. Folks here love almonds and nuts in general. And I love nuts, especially these nuts. <laughs> a beautiful blend of spices. It's almost like a biryani. Nice texture on the rice. I love that brown color. It's brown in such a way that you know it's been soaking up some nice flavors. Here's a piece of fish with the rice. All the sauces are co-mingling. <laughs> I gotta say, food's getting better with every plate. There is a live meat roasting section. We're gonna go check that out next. There is one thing we've not tried yet, that is the live roasted meats. Now the animals are not alive, but the roasting definitely is. Right here we've got our meat on the grill. We've got some chicken, kofta, and beef right here. Oh, he's putting more on the grill. This looks real tasty, I love it. Oh, right here they have some sauces. They have garlic sauce, tartar sauce, barbecue, and cocktail sauce too. 
So we have our plate right here. This is some major meat. We have kofta. This is the lamb, four shrimp that have been grilled, chicken, and then this sauce is called tum. Let's head back to the table. Right here we have our grilled meats. Let's start with the shrimp. I'm gonna twist off the head, and they've already split the back, kind of making it pretty easy to get the rest of it off. They've split it, they took the poop line out of its spine, basically. I should say mostly, I found some poop still. Try it out. Delicious. That is a tasty shrimp. It's bouncy. It's shrimpy. It's very nice. This is called tum. This is a garlic cream sauce. It's so intensely garlicky that if you had this on a first date, they would divorce you and you would have to pay alimony somehow, even though it was your first date. So if you really like pure, intensely garlic flavors, that is the one for you. You cannot just have meat alone in Lebanon. You must have it with bread. I got some more of this bread right here. Most people just kind of eat with their hands. In this scenario, they would take some bread, they break off some meat, hit it with some of this delicious, garlicky, creamy, boom, and throw it back. Cheers. I love lamb. I grew up in Minnesota, not much lamb. Plus, you know, in the US, if you get lamb, what do you get? Lamb chops. And it's something that my family never had because, you know, we were white trash. When I got McDonald's twice a year, it was like, oh my God. Mom, did you win a scratch off? We got McDonald's? I got two cheeseburgers? What happened, Mom? Lamb is good, deliciously seasoned, great texture to the meat, creamy, like powerful garlic. And the bread here I like because it's really thin. Here, I can grab this chicken, wrap the bread around, peel it off, hit it with some sauce, and toss it back. Deliciously seasoned chicken. Still pretty moist. It's like the breast, but it's pretty good breast. I like it. These guys are grilled masters out there. But this meal, to me, doesn't work at all if you don't have the sauce. It's like trying to eat these shrimp without any sauce. It's a problem. This is our final dinner course from here. Dessert. Boom, we have entered the dessert section. Now here's what they would like you to do. They would like you to get a plate this size, but I'm not falling for that. Let's go, right here. This looks stunning and delicious. I'm gonna break off some of this. Much more cakey than expected. You can see there's like a cream on top and some pistachios. And then we have this right here. It looks like fried hair in the best way possible. And then there's cream in the middle. This reminds me of a Turkish dessert. It's important to not miss this step right here. That ain't water, that is syrup. And the syrup has to go on top of the dessert. So let's put it on. Oh yes. Right here, they literally just have a bowl of whipped cream. Of course I wanna do this. Whipped cream just by itself right there. This is just chocolate cake. Oh, I think we have enough dessert. Let's go to the table. Our final course. It's been such an amazing journey. So many different surprises, so many new foods. And then right here, the best way to finish it off. Do you ever just go to Starbucks and order whipped cream in a cup? Because they'll look at you funny, but it's worth it because it's delicious. That just tastes like straight up cool whipped cream. That is very nice. By the way, whipped cream, diet hack. If you get cool whip in a tub, put it in the freezer. It's got like 10% of the calories of ice cream and it's real good. This right here, fat hack. If you're trying to get fat as fast as possible, eat whatever this is. There's a creamy upper crust. There's pistachio. Let's try it out. Oh, it's so sweet. It's like the texture of gulab jamun, that Indian dessert. Desserts here seem somewhat similar to Turkey. Turkey loves their desserts and here they definitely do too. Mm, it even tastes like a little bit of rose. It's good. It's interesting because it looks like it has layers, but then when you put it in your mouth, it's just one big sugary, saturated texture. Like bread that's been soaking in syrup. That's real sweet. I recommend tiny little bites for that. This is our final dessert. I've got the syrup on top. In the middle, a layer of cream. Just look at the top and bottom layers, the crunch on there. Let's try it out. Super sweet, awesome, crunchy texture. Just like little miniature sized fried noodles almost. Really creamy on the inside and just tons of freaking sugar. This is great and everything, but there's a private party behind me and they have a giant cake. I'm looking at it right now. I kind of want some of that too. There's a cross on the cake. Maybe the cake is for God? God cake. After experiencing this affordable buffet, I'm ready to splurge at Beirut's most lavish lodge. I'll spend well over $1,000 on room and board, including three one-of-a-kind dining experiences. Oh, so that is the most expensive fish. Look at that, that's a Lebanese breakfast sandwich. It all starts with a very buoyant breakfast. Check it out. This is breakfast, everybody. Two of them? No, this is for you. Is that for someone else? Yeah. I'm jealous now. I thought it was the only one. All right, here's the big moment. They're gonna take it and put it in the water and set it out to sea. There it goes, drifting away. <laughs> I guess I gotta get in there now. I am now descending into the pool. 
And here we are, ready to enjoy our meal. I don't know how much, oh yeah. It can hold a pretty good amount of weight. This table could have held Rose and Jack. Nobody would have had to die if they had this on board. Let's get into it. To drink, we have orange juice, we have coffee, and then, if you want to spice it up a little bit, this is also coffee, but it has tequila in it. Actually, I brought this myself. They didn't offer this to me. Mmm. Oh, it's a perfect way to start the day. We've got local Lebanese bread. Over here, we have a cheese tray with maybe five different types of cheese on there. Let's try this first. The best part is you can pee during your breakfast and nobody knows. Oh. Mmm. That is a basic straight up cheddar, but I enjoy it. This is halloumi cheese. It's a very dense, salty Middle Eastern cheese, and it's one of my absolute favorites. Mm. It's like squeaky against your teeth. It's very nice. Here, we got apples, strawberries, some melon, some big blackberries. Mmm. It's a very nice, typical fruit salad. What else we got? This egg, I don't know when it was fried. Could have been 10 minutes ago, could have been an hour ago, but it looks good overall. Um. Here, French croissants. Here we have some strawberry preserves. Take a little bit of that, throw that onto a croissant. Take some of the meat over here on this side. Turkey, ham, throw in a little bit of cheese. Look at that, that's a Lebanese breakfast sandwich. There's a bird right there. I don't think you should drink that water. Oh, it has my pee in it. Let's try this delicious Lebanese sandwich. Mm -hmm. Very nice. You might think, oh, the jam or the jelly wouldn't work. Incorrect, it's very nice. Now, what is this even? It's like white granola. It's okay. This is white. It's like Greek yogurt with no sugar at all. Let me take a quick break from eating and talk about the price of this right here. In general, I've found things to be quite affordable in this country. For this to be floating and to be feeding two of you, 50 bucks. It's only $50 for all this and for this experience. That's wild and I think that's shockingly affordable. Okay, we still have a few more foods to try though. Right here, chocolate pudding or chocolate fondue, I don't know. Oh, or Nutella, that's really sweet. I wanna take this pancake, hit it with a little bit of syrup, hit it with just a touch of whipped cream. Just a little bit. Yeah, hold on. You have to be careful when you cut it, because if you cut too hard, you will capsize your own table. Cheers. Mmm. Delicious maple syrup, thin delicious pancakes, and then a load of whipped cream on top. Um, I was about to say I want to start every day like this, but actually I don't. It's a little bit cumbersome. It is a unique experience. It makes you wonder where else could I be eating meals that I haven't been. Skydiving while eating. Bungee jumping while eating. Scuba diving while eating. I mean, there are many more opportunities to be eating that could be exploited throughout the day. That's all I'm saying. Wash down the pancakes with a little bit of OJ. That is breakfast. After this, we're gonna head to our room. I'm gonna give you a quick room tour, and then we're gonna be ordering some of the most expensive room service they have here. It's very unique, you don't wanna miss out. Now we are inside the hotel. This is our room, and this is what $800 gets you in Beirut, Lebanon. Let's take a look. Let's start first with the bathroom. This thing is huge. Yes, there's only one sink. Here, this whole room is for showering. It's gigantic. There's a bathtub. I like this. You've got a stool. You can be showering. You can think about your day. Why wouldn't you have a stool in your shower? Over here in the toilet, normal toilet, right? But when you're done, you can move over to here. This is called a bidet. You turn it on, you drink from here. Psych, just kidding. This is for cleaning your butt. Here's what I don't understand. It's so unnecessary. In Vietnam, they have a hose right next to here and you just put the hose back, you're done. Here, I don't even know, do you get on this way? And then what am I supposed to do? Am I literally supposed to be adding up water towards my bee hole? It seems unnecessary, but you know, it's nice that they have it. I just prefer the hose. Shh, shh, let's keep going. Over here, we have closet space, coffee maker. Here, coffee pods. Here, cups. When we first got here, they said, hey, free mini bar. And for me, that's like ding, ding, ding. It's like winning the jackpot. We got in here, water, 7-Up, Pepsi. Okay, listen, hotels. You're not allowed to call it a mini bar if it's full of Pepsi and 7-Up. Right here, bed, desk, workspace, place to get stuff done. Little couch hangout area. But look, that's not it. We have a whole area outside, including a jacuzzi. Let's take a look. Oh, it's locked. Table for two. This is the jacuzzi. You do hope that they clean it out every time, right? I hope that. As you come out, you have some sunbeds, get a little bit of skin cancer. Here, this is like a perfect sunset hangout area. This is the pool. And then to the right, you can barely see it, but that is the Mediterranean Sea. So this is the space. What do you think? Is it worth it for 800 bucks? Let me know downstairs in the comments. In the meantime, I'm gonna go inside to check out the room service menu. Let's order up some food and see what they got. All right, I've got the hotel menu right here. I gotta say, I don't see that expensive of food. The most expensive thing on the menu is the beef filet, which is a steak, truffle mashed potatoes, asparagus, a secret sauce. It's like $55. That's not that crazy for steak delivered to your room. I see sandwiches, I see Italian pasta, and then I see a lot of Lebanese food too. I'm gonna try to get some Lebanese side dishes along with whatever looks expensive. So I'm gonna order a few things. Let's see what comes through that door in 30 to 40 minutes. I just heard the bell. The food has arrived. Let's check it out. 
Hello. Hi. Welcome in. Oh my god, I think we got one of everything. Oh, that looks nice. It smells really good. Boom! Here's how you know you're an animal. When you order your room service for yourself and they say, so, uh, is that for three people? I'm like, it's just for me. Anyways, let's take a quick tour. This on the menu was just called crab. They meant crab salad. Unfortunately, with cucumber on top. Right here, steak tartare like I've never seen before. Bread, potatoes, my beef filet. On the phone, they asked me, do you want it well or medium well? <laughs> Bless me. And then I said, uh, medium rare, is that okay? And they said yes. I don't really blame them in this situation. It's tough to get medium rare because they have to like cook it and then bring it to your room and then it cools down and as it cools down, it cooks more. So that's a steak. This right here is four different types of mezza, including the kebet and then the kanefe. This is an iconic dessert in this part of the world. Very delicious. Let's get going. They brought me two spoons and no forks. Ah, thanks. Let's start with this. Steak tartare should be raw, but it looks like it's in a gravy. It doesn't look like any steak tartare I've ever seen before in my freaking life. Let's try it out. Mm, cold, very sour. I'm pretty sure it's cooked. But it's hard to tell. There's so much vinegar in here. I feel like it might have just cured. Incredibly sour. It's basically pickled beef at this point, but I kind of like it. Here we have the crab. Now the crab on top has these beautiful eggs. Mm, good eggs. Now this is crab. This appetizer is like six bucks. So I expected it to be just kind of mock crab. Cheers. Mm, very sour, not like savory or sweet or any other additional flavor. It tastes slightly crabby, but it's just an overwhelming citrus sourness. I don't hate it. It's just very unusual. Then here we have the mezza. This is probably stuffed with something probably lamby. This is the kebbe. It's fried on the outside and then beef on the inside or maybe lamb. This one looks like a samosa. I've not had something like this yet. Take a look inside. It smells like vegetables. Mm, not bad. Mushroom memes and maybe some cabbage and it's definitely sour for some reason. Cleanse the palate. Here, we have mashed potatoes. Now, I do like they put a salted egg yolk in the middle. It's not, I can't really chop it. Yo, that's the tomato. Is that a tomato? The girl tomato. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've been in Asia way too long. Oh, this is a weird salted egg yolk. It's not that, they don't have that here. Oh my God, my wife is right. Anyways, potato steak's fine. Let's cut into the steak and see if it is medium rare. Okay, not bad. It probably kept cooking to a medium. I don't blame them for that. The filet is very lean, but it does look soft and tender nonetheless. Let's try it out. Great texture, great softness. It is not very flavorful, but that's why on the side, you've got like a mushroom sauce here. Dip it in there. Oh yeah, that's real mushroomy. Mm -hmm. And then here, roasted garlic. And that is where the flavor is. Let me point this out. Without the tax, everything here would be about $110, which is not bad when you're considering that I also got two Diet Pepsis. This is certainly enough to feed two people. I think it's a good deal. Our final item is this, the canefe. This is the best use of cheese in any dessert in the world. So you can see that big middle section full of cheese. It's already cooled down way too much. Here, this is just a thick, delicious syrup. And you're supposed to just coat the whole top of it with this. This is gonna give it all that sugary sweetness mixed with the cheese, mixed with the bread. I'm gonna get a fork full. Definitely there's no cheese pull, but it still looks delicious. A little pistachio on top. Cheers. Folks in Lebanon, they love cheese so much and I love them for loving cheese so much. After this, we still have one more meal. That is dinner. They have a seafood restaurant here that is part of the hotel. We're gonna head there next and check out the most expensive item on their menu. Let's go in four hours or five hours when I'm hungry again. We've just taken a short walk from the hotel to the beachside restaurant behind me right here. It is called Restaurant. Okay, that is probably Arabic and I do not know what it says. We're gonna go inside and see if we can get a table. We did not make a reservation because no one answered the phone. Let's see what's up. The restaurant is interesting, it's a beautiful place. Right here is the resort where we're staying, and then this is me, here, at the restaurant. So, I'm looking at the menu right now. The two most expensive things that I see on here, they have grilled jumbo shrimp, which per kilogram is about $82, so that's about $40 a pound, pretty expensive. And then they have lobster termidor. Now, what is termidor? Termidor was the 11th month in the French Republican calendar, huh? I was talking about calendars, but it's showing pictures of lobster on Google. So maybe it means like cooked in a little crock pot like this? It's tough to figure out. I want 
really have something epic that looks amazing. We're gonna have to see what we can find. My man, do you have shisha? Yes, you have. <laughs> we're probably gonna top that with a shisha. So right now I'm trying to order fried fish. They asked how many I want. I said one, and they said, what are you doing? And I said, I don't know how big it is. So they said, come into the kitchen, take a look at how big the fried fish is and judge for yourself. Which one is the Sultan? Oh, so that is the most expensive fish by kilogram. It is a tiny fish. No wonder he was like, what are you talking about? So what kind of fish is this? This is the uh, Oh, locus is 90. Okay, we'll take one locus. Here's the lobster right here. Not too big. It's like a starter lobster, you know, if you're turning six. Okay, so one lobster. These are the shrimps right here. We'll get one kilogram of those. Okay. All right, thank you. Boom. Right here we have our meal and um, we have our own light that we brought to the restaurant. Are you telling me you guys go to restaurants and just don't bring your own lighting? That's weird. Anyways, let's take a look at the food. We have a lot here. This is all shrimp right here. And then, can I level with you? They brought these two plates and I said, where's the lobster? And they go, it's there. And I said, is this the lobster right here? The black, very tiny piece of lobster. And uh, it turns out, yes, um, lobster does not look fantastic. But right here, we have a big old fish that's been fried, it's still warm, and it looks crunchy. Let's start with the worst. I'm gonna peel that out of the shell. It's looking very dark, but maybe it's gonna have a nice like char grilled taste to it. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of lemon. <laughs> I'm putting lemon on it, but there is only so much a lemon can do. Uh, I'm not sure what happened. It tastes really bad. To the restaurant's credit, as soon as I saw the lobster, I was like, guys, what is this? It looks like a lobster burn victim. They were like, we'll bring you another one. But to not their credit, don't put the burn victim lobster on the plate in the first place. That being said, moment of redemption, this is a shrimp. They cut it in half like this, put it on the grill, and this looks fantastic. And it feels like it'd just be super easy, rip it out of the shell. This is all meat. It looks really exceptional. So we went from like a one out of 10 lobster to a 10 out of 10 shrimp right here. Cheers. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's a delicious flavor. It's zesty with the lemon. They put some Middle Eastern spices on there too. There's cumin, and I can't suss out what else, but they've definitely put some spices on there to let you know that you are in Lebanon. They have this delicious garlic sauce right here. I'm gonna hit it on there. Cheers. Oh, man. Mm. Very satisfying. That is some of the best garlic sauce in the world. It's like a creamy garlic sour cream. Let's dive into this fish right here. It's got a fried eyeball right here. Oh, let's try it out. I didn't eat it. It's right here. I don't want to eat it. I'm going to dig in right here. They've scored the fish, so it's got like little meat handles. Oh, it's got nice breading on the outside. It's golden brown and crispy. And then it looks soft, flaky, succulent, and juicy on the inside. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of lemon. And I'm going to hit it with a little bit of garlic, too. That is a big bite. Cheers. Mm, this is good. Wonderful crunchy skin, perfectly fried meat. This right here, absolutely delicious. This is an expensive meal, but it's certainly not the most expensive meal we've done. In Switzerland, we paid $600 to go on a boat to go to the restaurant. That did not even include anything to do with the price of the meal. In Bali, we paid around the same price for a meal, a private meal, and a private server. Here, no private server. What's nice here is you're right on the ocean and you can smoke shisha. The only thing that was a little bit of a loser here was a lobster. Is that lobster coming? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they brought us another lobster. It's very sweet of them because this one looks 300% better. Take a look at this. They still put some spices on there. Oh, look at that. Oh my God, a world of difference. Let's try it out. Tastes like olive oil and cumin and some other Lebanese spices. Incredibly chewy, probably overcooked, but listen, all that matters is that he tried, they put more effort into it, and it is certainly at least twice as good as the first one. And I thank them for that. After an overload of Lebanese cuisine, I'm looking for something a bit more familiar. How about American fast food? But there's a catch. Here, this Middle Eastern McDonald's and Beirut Burger King have menu items you've never seen in the USA. Oh, Burger King is selling a f***ing Big Mac. Let's go inside and take a look. This particular McDonald's happens to have an outdoor seating area, which is very nice. Also on this block, they have Starbucks, they have Pizza Hut, they have it all going on. All the Western classics. You can come to the Middle East and feel like you never left Minnesota. Here, they don't have the typical ordering kiosk, so I'm gonna have to interface with actual local human beings. I'm a little bit anxious, but let's see how it goes. 
Can I please have a Big Mac set? Also have a chicken Big Mac, the spicy nuggets, and a mushroom and Swiss burger. This is all I have right here. 2,540,000. Okay, so it comes out to about $30 for all that. What is the exchange rate here? Do you know? So 91,000 for every American dollar. Meanwhile, the official exchange rate is 15,000. Thank you very much. Okay, this is all my change. This is a little bit of USD, and then this is a lot of the local currency. About three years ago, one of these notes used to be worth about $66. Now it's worth about $1. Brutal. Guys, check it out. We have our food right here. I've got four burgers, some nuggets and fries and a drink. And honestly, I should have gotten more food. I just felt the pressure, you know, like when you're talking to a human, you feel like you have to hurry up. Ugh, humans. Let's start with these fries. Crunchy, salty, addictive. They're like crack in the form of fried potatoes. Tasty fries and a delicious Diet Coke. Zero calories, so it cancels out all of these calories. Let's talk about money. My meal cost 2,540,000. According to Google, I just paid $169 based off the official currency exchange rate, but inside they told me it was roughly 30 something dollars. It seems very similar to what it would be in the USA, or maybe even slightly cheaper. McDonald's in the USA used to be like, well, I'm broke and I'm hungry. I'll get McDonald's, it's tasty. Now it's like, I'm broke because I ate McDonald's. Big change, I don't know what happened there. So the first thing we're gonna try here is the Big Mac. Did you ever want to know how to say Big Mac in Arabic? Well, there it is. It looks good overall. Looks like a pretty typical build. I couldn't really tell it apart from an American Big Mac. Let's try it out. Mmm, it's really good. The special sauce is really feeling special today. It's delicious stratified layers of yummy beef, red lettuce, cheese. 10 out of 10. Here's my big question for you guys watching. Are you a Big Mac guy or are you a Whopper guy or yell? For me, if I had to choose between a Big Mac or a Whopper, it's Whopper every time. It's so juicy, it's tomatoey. They put in mayonnaise and ketchup. Very lovely. Big Mac, a respectable second place though. Let's jump over here to the spicy nuggets. I've not lived in the USA just for a scant 15 years, so I'm not sure if spicy nuggets exist in the USA, do they? Also, this is something I don't really see as an option for dipping sauces. It's just hot mustard. Maybe I'm out of touch. Maybe somebody in Tampa Bay, they're gonna say, oh, no, no, we've had that for a long time already. This doesn't look any different from the non-spicy nugget, so how am I to know? I guess I won't until I bite it. It's one out of 10 spicy. It's not very spicy. It tastes different though from an American nugget, and it's hard to pin down what that is. Gonna hit it with some mustard here. It's sweet and hot, kind of like my wife. I've had a Big Mac before. Something I don't think I've ever had is the Chicken Mac. Oosh. This is what Taco Bell does. They have the same five ingredients. They remix them into a thousand different menu items. Here, we have a Big Mac bun. We have the chicken patty that they already had from the McChicken. Take a bite. Oh my God. It's very sad drawing. The difference between this and a McChicken is that it has cheese, and the cheese is coming through in a big way. Very creamy. You hit it with the mayonnaise, you get a little bit of tang. I don't usually love lettuce, but it's giving a little bit of texture. It's like Kevin Richardson of the Backstreet Boys. It's nice that he's there, but if he wasn't there, would we know? What is Kevin Richardson's net worth? Okay, his net worth is $40 million, so joke's on me. Anyways, back to the chicken. That tastes like $40 million. Now here's something I've never seen in the USA. This is the grand chicken. It's a big chicken sandwich. It's a big bun, maybe a little bit of spinach on there, some white cheese, one tomato just way off to the side. And then on this side, more cheese and then a much more robust, big, thick fried chicken patty. Oh yeah. Wow, the greens are surprisingly good. It tastes like maybe arugula. There's tomato, there's pepper jack. It's got a little kick. That chicken patty is really thick and a delicious savory sauce too. Juicy and savory, I love it. There's one thing you will notice about this menu though. They have a lot more chicken options, but they have zero pork options. Clearly that's because of the big Muslim community here. I think it's easier just to have no pork across the board. Alas, last we've come to our final and most expensive burger, the mushroom and Swiss. Whoosh, wow. You open up the box and you get a wrapped burger. Delicately unwrapping it, there's been some leakage. There's a lot of Swiss juices happening in here. That is a double patty, a load of mushrooms, creamy white sauce, then sticky cheese between both beef patties and even more cheese on the bottom. There's a lot going on here. Let's take a bite. Oh man. One of the best mushroom and Swiss burgers I've ever had in my life. Tons of big mushrooms, tons of cheese, and this cream sauce is to die for. This is really impressive. You know, when I was a kid, they didn't have stuff like this on the McDonald's menu. These days, McDonald's is really trying to diversify, which can be a dangerous game. Think about it this way. When you were young, there were like four types of toothpaste. Go to the toothpaste aisle now. There's no way we should have 96 options for toothpaste, but we do. Why? Because marketers panic. They don't know what to do, so they create more options. That's what's happening here. This is my first meal for today, but I've got one more coming up at Burger King. Let's go. We 
we've just come to a mall. Actually, we're inside of a beautiful rooftop food court. Behind me is the smallest Burger King I've ever seen in my life. It's a little triangle, but they have a full menu and actually a lot of menu items I've not seen before, including bacon that doesn't come from a pig. But what animal does it come from? Let's go inside and find out. So there's no kiosk. We're gonna have to deal with another human being again. Could I please have a Whopper and a Big King? And could I have a Steakhouse and Twister fries and Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi? Yes, sir. it's very Oh, it's I do it myself. Okay. okay. Right here, they have Pepsi. Pepsi is way worse than Coke. Everybody knows it. But maybe they get a good discount or something. I like getting my own soda. I feel like I kind of earned it, you know? I worked for it. Among the burgers I got, one of them is called a Steakhouse and it has bacon on top and it looks freaking gigantic. I've never seen it in the US. Let's see how it is. Ladies and gentlemen, Burger King in the Middle East, in Lebanon, actually. This looks fantastic. I've got four burgers again. I'm gonna start with the classic right here. This is the Whopper. We're doing a little QA, quality assurance. Burger King will thank me for this. It looks great. Now, the only thing is they didn't ask me if I wanted a Whopper with cheese. And can I say something? When you go to the fast food place and there's a bunch of TVs and the menu keeps changing, does that give anybody else anxiety? That gives me tremendous anxiety. I can't read that fast. So now I'm already living in regret, but it's okay. The Whopper, it looks very warm in my hands. The bread is soft. You can see they put way too much mayonnaise in this particular area, and that looks tasty to me. Try it out. Mm, I need one more bite to know for sure. Mm -hmm. It tastes 95% the same. There's something about the Whopper, there's something about that incredible combination of lettuce, tomato, mayo, ketchup, and then the smoky beef patty, the flame grilled patty. Are there actually flames back there? Probably not, but at some point, they put flames or flame seasoning onto this patty, and it's very nice. Here's one thing I was not expecting. They have a chicken Whopper, which I've never heard of before. Look at that, two tomatoes. That's how it should be. It should never be one tomato to the side. We've got lettuce and we've got a load of mayo and this is a flame-kissed chicken. Very juicy. That's surprisingly delicious. If you're one of those vegetarians that doesn't eat beef but eats chickens because they're kind of dumb and you don't care that much about their feelings, this is for you. You can taste the smoke, and that's what I want at home. I want Burger King to sell in bottles whatever smoke flavoring is going into this. So that is the chicken Whopper. What's next? The pork chop Whopper, tuna Whopper, dolphin Whopper, peacock Whopper. All these are viable options for the future. This right here. If we were in the USA, this would be called curly fries. Here, it says it's on the menu for a limited time, and they're called twister fries, or twist, twisted, twi not curly fries, I'm not sure why. Perhaps people in Lebanon prefer the word twisted or twister over curly, but they're looking pretty curly to me. Cheers. Mm -hmm. It tastes like a pretty standard American curly fry. I was hoping they put some cumin or something like that on there, but no. Here, a spicy cheese bowl. I do believe I maybe had this before when I was in Spain, but this time they're actually still melted. They're too chemically, too like oozy, fake liquid cheese. Onto this right here, this is another burger I've never heard of before. That is the Big King. Well, what is inside a Big King, you ask? Let's find out. So it's like a oh, amazing discovery. Burger King is selling a Big Mac and they're calling it a Big King. How is this not front page news? They have special sauce, they have pickle, they have lettuce, they have three layers of bread, they have cheese on the bottom. This is a fucking Big Mac. Is that even allowed? I've never seen this before. Imagine if McDonald's made the Mick Whopper completely uncalled for. They wouldn't do it because they have something called Dignity Burger King. Come on. This is fun because we already did have the Big Mac just moments ago. Now I'm going to taste Burger King's Big Mac known as the Big King. The bread isn't as thin and fluffy. The meat has more of that smoky flavor than McDonald's. Not as much special sauce coming through. It tastes cheesy, but the special sauce ain't so special. It's not tangy. It doesn't have any pizzazz on my tongue. I feel like how girls used to feel when I went out with them on Tinder. Because I was 260 pounds, but I took all the pictures up here. So I seemed thin, and then they saw me back then, and I was like, psych, I'm huge. Are you gonna run? And they were like, eh, I'll get a free meal. And I was like, I'm actually broke too. Next burger. Right here, the last thing we got. This is the steakhouse. I've got high hopes for this. It's a steakhouse, an entire house of steak on one burger. Big, beautiful bun, rip it up. Wow, it's a delicious catastrophe. Lettuce, tomato, barbecue, cheese, mayonnaise, so maybe fried onions. And then right here, ladies and gentlemen, even though we're in Lebanon, I found some bacon. And guess what? That is beef bacon that they put on top, not pork bacon, which could never be as good, but let's give it a shot. It's a messy burger. The bacon is not crispy, but it's passable. It's smoky, it's got a nice chew to it. The overall sensation, very sweet barbecue sauce. It is a mess of different sauces in there. It feels like something your drunk roommate would whip up at two in the morning. If I had to give it a pass or a fail, I'd give it a pass. But my favorite among everything here would have to be the classic Whopper. Burger King and McDonald's, they're like the yin and the yang. Think about it, one has Coke, one has Pepsi. One has... Oh, I can't think of any other good comparisons. <laughs> 
has a Big Mac, one has a Big King. They're the same, but they're different. And one is good and one is evil, and you're gonna have to decide which one is which for yourself. Well, my friends, that has been our supersized Lebanese food tour. From the streets to high-end eateries, this place offers a wide array of tempting, tasty treats that'll keep you coming back for seconds and thirds. As always, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace.